When I learned about the volumes of pyramids and cones, I became curious on where the factor of one-third came from. So, in today's video, I will be explaining um, where the factor of one-third comes from when finding the volumes of pyramids and cones. To do this, I'm going to be using my favorite 3D modeling software, Blender. So, let's open up Blender and start with a cube. Now, when most people initially see a cube, they notice that it could be rotated by um, 90 degrees along the X, Y, or Z axis. And it will look like that the cube was never ever rotated. Um, but what is less obvious is that cubes actually have a three-fold rotation symmetry. Um, this means that the cube could actually be rotated by increments of 120 degrees along a specific axis. Here, let me show you. So, let's go to edit mode, and now let's draw um, an edge from this vertex to the furthest opposite vertex, and draw an edge, like so. Now, notice that if we look down this edge, especially if we turn off perspective view, you notice that now we have a hexagon, and hexagons could be rotated by increments of 120 degrees, and will look like that they were never, ever rotated. Okay. Now, Blender has this neat feature which allows um, p objects to be rotated along arbitrary axes. So, um, to do this, let's switch from XYZ Euler to axis angle, and now we need to specify our axis. So, we want this edge right here to be our axis, so starting from this um, vertex, going to this vertex, notice how we have to go um, positive 2 in the X direction, positive 2 in the Y direction, and notice that we actually have to go downwards by 2 in the z direction, so negative 2 in the z direction. Now no notice that now when we rotate this cube, it's now rotating along this axis. Pretty neat, right? But notice that if we put in um, increments of 120 degrees, let's say 240, you notice that the cube looks like that it was not even rotated, it was just not rotated at all. But if we just shift it slightly, it is clearly rotating. And this is because of the cube's three-fold rotation symmetry. Now, um, the three-fold rotation symmetry about cubes and the factor of one-third um, when find the volumes of pyramids and cones um, are not a coincidence. Um, they actually have something to do with each other. So, to show this in greater detail, let's add some more edges and let's delete some vertices. So, let's add an edge from this vertex to this vertex, another from the another edge from this vertex to this vertex, and now we can delete these three vertices as we won't be needing them anymore. Now we can fill in everything with faces like so, and yeah, so now we have a pyramid, um, a little bit of a funky pyramid, but it is still a pyramid. Now if we go to render view, you notice that it is rather difficult to see, so let's assign a material. Let's say that we want this gold color for our pyramid, um, and yeah. So now what we want to do is set our object origin to this apex, so to do this, let's move our 3D cursor to this apex first, and then object mode, set origin to 3D cursor. Now, um, this is now our object origin. Now we want to make some duplicates of our pyramid, so let's do just that. Here's one duplicate, let's change the color to, let's say, the screenish color, and now let's rotate it by 100. 20 degrees along that axis that we previously made, and notice how it fits in um, to one of these holes. Now we still have this cavity right here, and it seems that it could actually be filled in by another duplicate of one of these pyramids, so let's make another duplicate, change the color to let's say this bluish color, now let's rotate it by 240 degrees. Now notice that we just formed a cube out of three identical pyramids. Now let's say that the side length of this cube is s, so therefore the volume of this cube is going to be s cubed. Um, and since there are three identical pyramids making up this cube, then therefore the volume of each of these pyramids will be one third s cubed. Now notice that if we move these pyramids slightly apart, you can actually see how they can come together. Notice how it, fit toge it fits together in a rather odd shape, but yeah. So that's pretty neat, but now we don't actually need these pyramids anymore, so now we can get rid of them. Okay, now, this doesn't really look like a pyramid that I would expect to see in Egypt. Um, let's say that if like a pharaoh saw someone building this in Egypt, um, they probably would not be the happiest person around. 
So let's fix that. So to fix that, we could slice our pyramid into infinitesimally thin slices like so, like this, but notice that in our case, our slices are rather thick. Um, this is so just so that the slices are visible. So yeah, now what we could do is we could slide our slices. Um, so now our apex of our pyramid will be directly above the center of our base. Um, notice that we are just sliding our rectangular prisms. We aren't actually like um, changing the vo total volume since we're not changing the volumes of the rectangular prisms. We are just sliding the rectangular prisms. So yeah, let's give that a try like so. And notice how it is slowly becoming more like a pyramid I would expect to see in Egypt. There we go. So notice now we have a nice big pyramid. Now let's take an orange juice break before continuing because why not? <sighs> okay, now let's say that we want um, the height of this pyramid to be a lot taller. Let's say that we want, let's say, double the height of what we current have, currently have. So, all we have to do is just double the height of each of these rectangular prisms. So, um, in, if we double the height of each of these rectangular prisms, therefore the volumes of each of these rectangular prisms will double. So therefore, um, the total volume of this pyramid would double. So therefore, um, that is where the factor of one third um, comes from when finding the volumes of pyramids. But what about cones? So we have our cone right here. It's a nice blue color and we can actually proceed with the same strategy. Let's take another orange juice break because I'm getting thirsty. <sighs> Whew. Okay, so we can actually proceed with the same strategy. So we slice our cone into infinitesimally thin slices, like so. Notice, like once again, our slices are rather thick, just so that they are visible. Now, what we want to do is construct um, a square pyramid of equal volume. And you might ask, how do we do this if we don't know the volume of this cone? Well, we can do this slice by slice, starting from the base of the cone. The base of our cone is a circle with an area of pi r squared. So, we can add a square, a square slice of equal area to the for our base of our pyramid, like so. Um, and we could just work our way up our pyramid. And notice, um, as our, as the area of our uh, circular slices decreases, um, the area, well, we start adding smaller um, square cuts to our pyramid. And we continue to do this until we reach the apex. And now we have formed a square pyramid of equal volume because at each of the corresponding heights the slices have the same area so therefore we have um, a square based pyramid of equal volume to our cone and this is in essence Cavallari's principle now you might ask how does this help us in finding the area of our cone well the area of a pyramid, well, we already know that. I meant the volume of cones appears. How would this help us finding the volumes of cone of our cone? Well, we already know the volume of our pyramid. It is one third base times height. Therefore, the volume of our cone, like here, um, will also be one third base times height. And this is where the factor of one third comes from when finding the volumes of pyramids and cones. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be making another video um, on how I made these graphics and animations. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to subscribe so that you will be notified when I upload that video. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye!